So thanks for listening. All right, John 16, 13. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own authority. Whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. And that is about the Holy Spirit. Many of you are sensing that something is brewing. I asked the Lord, what is so heavy in the air? Something big is coming. As I've asked the Lord in secret for confirmation, he's given both me and my eight-year-old son dreams. These dreams have shown identical foresight and discernment about deception on a global level, global level, localized tyranny, and the power of God. God has granted my kid amazing, quite remarkable spiritual uh, insight into physical things that are happening in the world that we've never told him about, and he's given him the grace to bear it without fear. Acts 2.17, in the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. The truth about the harm in the you know what is gaining ground. The attempt to censor proof of what it's doing to people I have to be careful how I say it on here, but you can read the details in the link. Uh, the truth is is starting to make rounds. The, 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 the narrative about it that the media has been perpetuating is beginning to fail. Tyrants are getting worried that they are facing prison time and worse. As people become sicker, lose loved ones, realize that they were hoodwinked, what they allow to be put into inside their children and cannot reverse it. This will create a lot of devastation and anger, outrage, hysteria, and demand for justice, truth, and political reformation. But many brainwashed people will still continue in ignorance. These elite puppet masters have nothing to lose, so they will stop at nothing to create either a distraction or more fear to shut people up and prevent a revolt. This will, they, so what they will do is they will try to get us to turn on each other instead. And this is going to be effective to a certain degree. They're dead set on accomplishing this authoritarian global governance that will eventually lead to the rise of the Antichrist and the beast system in the book of Revelation. Isolate people, divide people, intimidate them, and create fear. These are the authoritarian tactics that are very historically, um, very used historically, and they're going to increase in measure. According to the dreams that God has granted our family, there will be an authoritarian, a big authoritarian lunge for more control that this country has yet to see or even imagine possible. This could mean the sudden implementation of martial law and a Nazi-esque culture with citizens looking at each other with suspicion and making reports about their neighbors to the authorities. Another virus, a nuclear hazard, famine, a climate change crisis, or war could all be reasons for extreme and constitutional measures by the government. There will also be increased accusation towards Christians because we do not celebrate the LGBTQ lifestyle or join in on many other things that the rest of the world is parading as virtuous. And this will earn hatred from the reprobate world, just as true followers of Christ are promised. Matthew 10, 22 says, You will be hated by everyone because of me, but the one who stands firm until the end will be saved. Whatever it is, they will have people turning on each other in order to divide and conquer. It's called the Hegelian dialect. Create a crisis in order to present a solution and get cooperation that couldn't be achieved before. So digital ID, tracking, a Chinese social credit style system for your safety and security is all in the cards. In my son's dream, there was a blonde woman wearing a black, leather outfit and jade earrings on a red ship 
with long red nails. She was commanding people on a dock. Her plan was to put people back in masks and permanently. He told me that an eventual component of said authoritarian cooperation will be a digital life. He described a digital blindfold that sounded to me like the metaverse. He said it was appealing at first, but when he put on his mask in his dream, that is my eight-year-old, he put on his mask or his digital goggles that this woman on the ship and her workers were offering. As soon as he put them on, he also lost his hearing. So he had his mouth covered, his eyes covered, and his ears covered. All of a sudden, and it felt stuck and permanent on his face. And as soon as that happened, and he couldn't take it off, he couldn't hear, he couldn't see, and he couldn't speak, he realized something was wrong, and he realized the evil. So I asked my son why he thinks this woman was handing out blindfolds and goggles and earplugs, like lenses, he kind of described them as lenses. And he said, this is my eight-year-old, he said, because she didn't want anyone to hear anything except for her voice. And she definitely didn't want anyone to hear God anymore. And then he said, but I could hear God. And I said, what, is God, what did God tell you to do in the dream? He said, he was telling me, you can do this. And I asked him what this meant. And he said, save people from the masks and the earplugs and the blindfolds. So obviously the devil wants people silenced, blinded, and deaf to God's voice. Those are not difficult or cryptic symbols in the dream. They, but they especially want, because behind what's going on, behind the physical, is a spiritual war and the attempt to oppress followers of Christ and oppress the truth, not just about the political stuff that's going on, but the, from the gospel, right? Um, so the devil wants people silenced, blinded, and deaf to God's voice, especially to the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, that frees people from captivity. This woman on the boat represents the merchants of Babylon, or the whore of Babylon, that we are called to presently run from and to deny her luxuries. See this warning about her in Revelation 18. After this, this is a lament over fallen Babylon. After this, I saw another angel coming down from heaven. He had great authority and the earth was illuminated by his splendor. With a mighty voice, he shouted, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the great. She has become a, a dwelling for demons and a haunt for every impure spirit, a haunt for every unclean bird, a haunt for every unclean and detestable animal. For all the nations have drunk the maddening wine of her adulteries. The kings of the earth committed adultery with her, and the merchants of the earth grew rich from her excessive luxuries. Then I heard another voice from heaven say, Come out of her, my people, so that you will not share in her sins, so that you will not receive any of her plagues. For her sins are piled up to heaven, and God has remembered her crimes. Give back to her as she has given. Pay her back double for what she has done, Pour her a double portion from her own cup. Give her as much torment and grief as the glory and luxury she gave herself. In her heart she boasts, I sit enthroned as queen. I am not a widow, I will never mourn. Therefore, in one day her plagues will overtake her, death, mourning, and famine. She will be consumed by fire, for mighty is the Lord God who judges her. When the kings of the earth who committed adultery with her and shared her luxury see the smoke of her burning, they will weep and mourn over her. Terrified at her torment, they will stand far off and cry, Woe, woe to you, great city, you mighty city of Babylon. In one hour, your doom has come. The merchants of the earth will sweep and mourn over her because no one buys their cargoes anymore. Cargoes of gold, silver, 
precious stones and pearls, fine linen, purple, silk, and scarlet cloth, every sort of citron, wood, and articles of every kind made of ivory, costly wood, bronze, iron, and marble, cargoes of cinnamon and spice, of incense, myrrh, frankincense, wine, olive oil, fine flour, wheat, cattle, sheep, horses, carriages, and human beings sold as slaves. They will say, the fruit you longed for is gone from you. All your luxury and splendor have vanished, never to be recovered. The merchants who sold these things and gained their wealth from her will stand far off, terrified at her torment. They will weep and mourn and cry out, Woe, woe to you, great city, dressed in fine linen, purple and scarlet, the glittering with gold, precious stones and pearls. In one hour, such great, such great wealth has been brought to ruin. Every sea captain and all who travel by ship, the sailors and all who earn their living from the sea will stand far off. When they see the smoke of her burning, they will exclaim, was there ever a city like this great city? They will throw dust on their heads and with weeping and mourning cry out, woe, woe to you, great city where all who had ships on the sea became rich through her wealth. In one hour she has been brought to ruin. Rejoice over her, you heavens. Rejoice, you people of God. Rejoice, apostles and prophets. For God has judged her with the judgment she imposed on you. Then a mighty angel picked up a boulder the size of a large millstone and threw it into the sea and said, With such violence the great city of Babylon will be thrown down never to be found again. The music of harpists and musicians, pipers and trumpeters will never be heard in you again. No worker of any trade will ever be found in you again. The sound of a millstone will never be heard in you again. The light of a lamp will never shine in you again. The voice of bridegroom and bride will never be heard in you again. Your merchants were the world's important people. By your magic spell, all the nations were led astray. In her was found the blood of prophets and of God's holy people, of all who have been slaughtered on the earth. So this, this prophecy from the book of Revelation is about the fall of Babylon. And this woman on this ship in this dream represents the merchants of Babylon, Babylon the Great, um, or the whore of Babylon, the world, the reprobate, sinful world full of idolatries and luxuries that are very seductive to even Christians, even people in the church that God asks us to deny. He asks us to deny in order to come and follow him. He says, flee from her, my people, lest you partake in her sins and receive of her, of her plagues. So I'm going to go back to the message. Okay, so the woman on the boat represents the merchants of Babylon that are ca were called to run from and deny deny her luxuries in allegiance to God. I believe this is where we are at. We are at a place where God is sifting the wheat from the tares and he's calling the saints out of the church, out of the false church, out of the worldly church, the compromising church. And um, it's... Okay, there we go. Thank you. Okay, so when I asked the Lord about the earplugs and the lenses and the masks in my son's dream, I'm not sure how literal, you know, those things are going to be. Um, but what the Lord pointed out to me was Psalm 135. He gave me some verses from Psalm 135. So the, the mask, the goggles, the earplugs, those are, those are symbols of idolatry, of the luxuries of Babylon. Psalm 135 says, your name, Lord, endures forever. Your renown, Lord, through all generations, for the Lord will vindicate his people and have compassion on his servants. The idols of the nations are silver and gold made by human hands. They have mouths but cannot speak, eyes but cannot see. They have ears but cannot hear, nor is there breath in their mouths. Those who make them will be like them. And so will all who trust in them. 
So I asked my son why he thinks God gave him that dream if it was from the Lord. And he said, so that we know what it will be like. It will seem like it's about the villain, but it's not. It's all about Jesus. And I wasn't afraid. So the majority of the church, though, is not spiritually prepared for what is ahead. This type of thing, this message, this is not coming from the pulpit because much of the church has blinded itself from the truth. It has accepted the earplugs of the idolatry of Babylon, the media, trust in man. It cannot hear God's voice presently warning and guiding. These trials are meant to crush. The trials that are coming are meant to crush grapes, to bring forth new wine from his church. There are grapes that, on the vine, that God has ripened that are ready to be pressed. And, and, and these trials will bring new wine and his glory and his, and his power. And, and the church and the remnant and the true followers of Christ are going to walk in that power and in that glory. And I think that there may be a season of darkness and delay where we may feel as though we are floundering a little bit. But I know, I know that God is going to meet us who are following him with his provision and with the supernatural strength and even miracles that we will need to survive what is coming. So I believe many generations have like many, many, many generations. This is what the Lord has shown me. We, they have labored in prayer in centuries past, going back centuries, have labored in prayer from the time the Bible was even written for this birth of this new wine and this glory that's going to come in our generation. And I believe we're going to see God's incredible power, provision, and protection come from some very devastating and dire circumstances. I won't promise that we won't suffer. In fact, I promise that we will because God's word promises that we will. This is just promises. This is just promise to followers of Christ in order to receive his glory. Without this perspective, though, many will lose hope and will even give up their faith in the one true God. God is going to test his church in increasing measures. We must prepare our hearts in the peace of Jesus now because those who stand for truth will be accused and tried as bigots, domestic terrorists, whatever. And I was led to Psalm 82 when I received this word about something coming, when God originally told me to urge others to also prepare their hearts in the Lord. Psalm 82 is entitled, A Plea for Justice, and it's about the public mischief of the wicked rulers of earth sitting presumptively as judges upon thrones of sand. Maybe I'll just, yeah, I'm going to read it. It's not very long. God stands in the congregation of the mighty. He judges among the gods. How long will you judge un unjustly and show partiality to the wicked? Defend the poor and fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. Deliver the poor and needy. Free them from the hand of the wicked. They do not know, nor do they understand. They walk about in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are unstable. I said, you are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High, but you shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. Arise, O God, judge the earth, for you shall inherit the nations. Jesus. So these judges on thrones of sand have something else up their sleeve that I think is about to hit the fan. And God is saying, we are not to fear when this happens. We are not to fear when this happens. People will say, stop fear mongering at a message like this when I say something is coming. But when you see what's actually coming, 
when I see what's actually coming and it's here, we're going to be glad that God has prepared us and told us in advance so that we do not fear when the rest of the earth is trembling and we can be of use and um, we can be of sound mind and maintain peace and joy. So I'm completely comfortable with causing a little bit of trembling now if it means people get rooted and, and run to the Lord and get rooted in the vine so that they are not shaken and swayed when these things come to pass and then the fear will really be rampant. We're not to fear. We must have faith in God's sovereignty and greater purposes. Their scheme is, that is, at, is as it has always been, the demise of God's people, his image bearers. God's plan is as it has always been, to strengthen and vindicate the righteous and judge the wicked, and to showcase his glory. The Lord also showed me in his spirit, showed me his spirit hovering and brooding over the earth in reaction to the increase of sin and evil. The lawless elites and their wicked deceptions and those who put their trust in them will face a reckoning. Sin and pride blind us. There will be distress and a season of darkness and despair when all of this takes place, but this is what is physically necessary to produce hearts of repentance. Luke 8, 17, for there is nothing hidden that will not be disclosed and nothing concealed that will not be made known and brought to light. Children of God, remember this. While we do not know precisely what we are about to face, we do know that God will use it for good, for our good, and for his glory. We need only to trust in him and obey his precepts. We have to wake up now, though, and stand at attention before the Lord. We must stop playing church and get with God's program. Or we will be swept away in the sea of confusion and chaos that will advance like a flood and take out many with it. God is inviting us to be set apart from this world. He is inviting us to be used as a torch. Holy Jesus. Holy Father. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. And the Holy Spirit just fell. He is inviting us to be used as a torch for his glory in this dark time if we seek him obediently and do not delay. This shaking that God is going to allow will mean a harvest of fruit for us to gather for his kingdom. We must be prepared to share God's word of hope and peace with disoriented and desperate people. On the last day of August, God drew me in and gave me this word to share, Lada, L-A-D-A, -A, and he said, tell them again to come. And when I looked up Lada, I discovered it to be a Hebrew word in the Bible for to know, but not just any no. Lada is intimacy between husband and wife. For example, Adam knew Eve. It's also the word in scripture when God said of Abraham, I knew him. And we know that marriage is just biblically symbolic of Christ and his bride, the church. So God's calling us to draw close to him and to stay close. This is what we must do to be sustained and unshaken by what we will witness so that we can do the gathering of the fruit of the harvest, evangelizing, taking care of people, to remain steadfast in how we will be tried requires that we know God in this Lada sense. It is in this sweet abiding relationship with the Lord that he teaches us how to be holy as he is holy. Many of us are already being intensely tried and tested because God wants to purge us of presumptuous sins so that we can be secure and blameless in his protection when he judges and disciplines the wanton nation. Because only God is steadfast and secure, idolatry causes anxiety. Idols are flimsy. I've experienced this. God is going to expose that. 
and fear leads to more sin and idolatry. I've experienced that as well. We must submit to his loving way of peeling our hearts from the world of sinking sand and receive his eternal, lasting kingdom inheritance. Chastening and the spiritual refinement of suffering are God's mercies, even if it hurts. Luke 14, 25 to 28. Large crowds were now traveling with Jesus, and he turned and said to them, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. And whoever does not carry his cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. Many of us don't know God as well as we think we do. Many of us are following a religious idea of God, or a Jesus invented by our own presumptuous faculties. One day in prayer, I was gently convicted of being more loyal to the sentimentality of my relationships, my church history, and tradition than to the Lord, even friends and family members. I've had to leave others, including those I once looked up to, at the cross in order to obey the voice of the living God. God revealed to me man-made things that I thought were godly, and I, I had to stop looking to the right or to the left. Knowing God means spending alone time with him, studying what his word says, hiding his word in our hearts, and familiarizing ourselves with his voice. This is the well of peace that no storm can shake. It is by Christ's strength that we will endure this hardship. Do not fear anything or anyone but the Lord. Come to him and learn to abide deeper so that the well of anointing is already dug and flowing by the time we find ourselves in the desert wilderness tempted to fear. We have to know him intimately or we will be given to fear, psychological manipulation, deception, danger, and foolish choices in the time ahead. Let none of us be arrogant enough to think that we can survive without our daily bread, the bread of life, Jesus, the word of God. Let none of us doubt that when Christ says he supplies all things to the righteous, he means all things. We don't need to grab after the luxuries of Babylon. Christ, what he supplies from his eternal kingdom is so much better, so much more satisfying. We must remember when it looks bad, what God's promises are. He highlighted these two words for me to hold on to. In the coming season, in the coming trial, which he um, gave me a vision of as a ring of fire. The church is going to go through a ring of fire meant to purify it. The two words are recompense and harvest. Genesis 50 verse 20 was the verse that accompanied this. You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. Our hope is not in this life, but in the eternal kingdom of God and in his glory. My son said that when he defied the authorities and cast off the mask and the lenses and the goggles and the earplugs in his dream, there was chaos and then a flashbang of bright light, which was Jesus returning. We must preach the gospel. Many of people, many of God's people who profess Christ have a mask over their mouth in the spiritual. They are self-censoring. They are not feeding the bread of life to other people that need it to the world. That's what God calls us to do is make disciples. We must also flee the worldly church. We must flee also the legalistic church. Note, I said legalistic, not holy. We want holiness. We don't want legalism, but we do want holiness. And there's a difference. That might be a video for another time. In fact, it will be a video for another time. <laughs> um, I have a word um, brewing about that. Um, so we have to seek the Lord with a listening ear as much as possible. 
We need to be spiritually fortified and edified in the word of God so that we are equipped. God is calling us urgently close because we must be filled with his living water in order to feed those around us who will be lacking and afraid. We must shake off all spiritual lethargy and focus on God. Take up our spiritual armor. So many Christians, it's amazing how many Christians don't believe that there's any sort of battle or warfare just because the Lord says, I will fight for you. Yes, the Lord will fight for us, but he also tells us to take up our own armor and get behind him. We're not just because we rest in the finished work of Christ doesn't mean that we are permitted to just passively um just passively walk this earth <laughs> um because we because the enemy's schemes satan's schemes against believers are very carefully crafted and cultivated um and it could even just be in the form of sleepiness that Satan will hinder the efficacy of somebody's Christian walk. Um, okay, I don't want to get off track. This is about finished. Thank you for hanging in with me. So, as my dad's favorite adage goes, dig a well before you are thirsty. Seek God in the secret place diligently. Here's what we have to look forward to. The world may be gripped by fear, but Christ will be our comfort and prince of peace. God will vindicate the righteous and exact justice on wicked rulers and their schemes. He will allow temporary suffering as discipline for the sake of eternal souls in his eternal kingdom. He will use physical hardship to invite hearts to give up all trust in man and to instead put their trust in him. That includes trust in self too. Even in our own thoughts, we have to surrender our understanding in order to receive the wisdom of, of the Holy Spirit who reveals to us what is to come. He will use what is coming to chasten those who think themselves wise. God will humble the proud. He will bring reformation to the body of Christ through this. God will use this to awaken people to the truth and to bring about a harvest of souls who will repent and receive his son, Jesus Christ, as Lord and Savior. God will break through the darkness with his light. He will use what looks really, really, really bad and will probably feel really, really bad to display his glory through the pure in heart. So get ready, repent, rejoice, and seek Jesus. Seek God. He's a good father. God bless you. She was just like, I think she had these like, like people who were like putting them on everybody that were like working for her. Okay. And then she was hoping that that would make the people want... Blinded. Blinded to hear everything that talks to everything else but only listen to her. Sorry, so that was what the earplugs were for? So, she, like, yeah, the earplugs so only made it so you so could hear you her voice? So you couldn't hear God, I think. Oh, really? She was trying to make it so you couldn't hear God, but I could hear God. Oh, <laughs> really? Yeah. What was, what was God saying? You can do this. What was, the, you said you can do this? Yeah. What was... He just told, he just gave me the courage. And what was this? That he, when he said you can do this, what did he I mean? It was like, like, just, he just gave me courage to do something, to do something, to save people. And save people? Yeah. So here okay. was, so oh, wow. first dream, second dream, and I'm pretty sure it's going to be that one in the next dream. It's but. right there. Mm -hmm. And then here the clouds are right here in the next stream. Mm -hmm. I think it'll follow the pattern because the clouds are like this. Yeah. So like me. So when you were saving people, how did you do? What What do you do to save people? And in, in I just I just unblinded them because that's what those like dark glasses were for. But you could see everybody. But you just it was just like 
but you're trying to force you to keep your eyes on her only. So it was a blind, so she was giving, trying, handing out these glasses that, that blinded that you and put yeah. earplugs in your ears so you could only and hear that, her. So, but I don't know what those glasses were really for. Mm -hmm. Uh, Cause you, I could see through them. Did she kind of look like, uh, like, hmm? What do you think? Who do you think she wait, represented? Wait. I don't. Um, I don't know really. Maybe a worker for the Antichrist. Maybe the media. What's the media? Like um. Yeah. No, I saw the same woman in two of my dreams. So that's why I'm so fascinated and I'm asking questions because I saw the same. Woman, does so she represent? What's the right side here again? Same body type as the. Oh, the oh, like Kamala Harris? Yeah, same body type. Oh, okay. And her, and her mouth was the same. Okay. Mm. But she was wearing like earrings that had like, 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 light blue, like blue, like light, like wave colored, like light wave colored. Oh, so she had earrings on. Did she have a lot of jewelry? Was she quite like made up? Like, did she have like makeup and like was she quite beautiful looking? Uh, no, she did not have lipstick, but she might have had a little one just pretty close to the color of her actual lips, maybe. Hmm. But the other thing was is that she looked like she had not creepy but beautiful nails done, which were red. Really long, like really long nails, yeah, fake the nails, ones that you had one. like yeah, the, fake nails. the artificial nails. Yeah, you know, I did have nails. artificial nails once. Which ones? And yeah, really yeah, but you know what? I just decided I didn't like them. Really? I, you know, I just felt the Lord tell me those are not for you. He didn't say it's wrong. He, I just heard him say these are not for you once, and then I had them removed. And never had them again. Oh, I like the Mona Lisa. Yeah, they were very pretty. I don't think there's anything wrong with fake nails. But sometimes, sometimes the Lord tells us to do things that aren't, and they're not permissible for us. They may be permissible for other people, but we just have to obey him even if we don't understand. Because that's what else in my dream. What else happened? Well, two got, like, at the very, very front. Like, maybe, like, three feet away from the tip of the boat climb. Because there were two boats around, so there's four now. I think that's probably, I think that's where the workers came from. Mm. So there were boats around her. Yeah. A red boat. think of like a visitation from another place What do you think God is trying to tell us you through that dream? I think he's just trying to explain what it's going to be like. Like it's going to, it looks like it's a ruined city. It's going to be like, it looks like somehow it's real evil. Except real yeah, evil. Yeah, like, yeah, real evil and really, really evil evil. Like, evil evil. Like, like sa Satan. <laughs> oh, okay. So the I get what you yeah. mean. So she's a pretty. She's like evil through and through. Mhm. Mm I wonder if she represents. There's a like a mistress of Babylon. In oh, the, you're recording me. In nice. the Bible, in the Book of Revelation, there's a mistress of Babylon. What's a mistress? Um. Well, she. Um, so the a mistress is somebody who's not faithful to 
is not faithful to maybe her husband. We go put it that way. So in the Bible, like a mistress represents people who are not faithful to God. Because when we follow Christ, we kind of become, well, the, the Bible uses the analogy of marriage. And so when we follow after other gods, or we serve the God of this world, which is Satan, or we do what we want and we live in sin, then we're not being faithful. And so the Bible you, says that that rep, is sometimes represented by this woman of Babylon. And so she could have represented this Babylonian um, world, I think, who who is very like charming and beautiful and gets people to trust her. Okay, so then he had another dream. And both of these were in September. And I apologize for the volume. getting hypnotized by the flag. You know, you can ask God for another well, dream. I bet he'll give you one. The most action in any recorded history? Just the chaos that was happening around you? Yeah. we have the power of speeches when we believe and you know what that God says greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world do you remember Cooper when you had that dream where you saw that I was being attacked by an ant and remember how powerful God was when you prayed and he showed up yeah. that's the power that belongs to you oh that was all you said was 